Uh, whoops. So this is supposed to be attached to my bead roller. It isn't. Let's take a look. So this is the bead roller. This handle goes on there and it's what clamps this top part down onto the bottom part here. So I folded this corner, folded this corner, folded this corner, thought, you know, thought, huh, I, I, I missed the line. It kind of wiggled. So I unclamped it, adjusted it, kind of put the fold a little further in, went to clamp it down. It wouldn't clamp down because it wasn't clamping down on a flat sheet. So I, I pushed a little harder and then I thought, huh, it's right on the ground. Stuck my foot on it and pachink broke right off. Whoops. So then I folded it anyway, because why not? It's already clamped in. And uh, now I can't unclamp it in. Pretty sure that's not going to come out of there without a major fight. So let's get this unclamped and uh, figure out how to fix this machine later. And so that way we'll be able to finish this project, you know, in part two of this one part, not a series. Okay, so to attempt this, got to assortment here of tools. Maybe we should try this one first. Oh, that was actually much easier than I expected it to be. It was hardly clamped down at all. Cool. A double bend kind of thing sure doesn't look good though. So because I bent this twice, I got this kind of double deal. I'm thinking I'm just gonna cut this part off. It's, it's a bit excessive anyway, and, and this flange really only serves to give me a, a point to, to weld onto the thing. So let me see, bet my, uh, bet my power shears will fit. Yeah, that looks good. I mean, relatively. Yeah. It's not bent over far enough though. Bet I can fix that. So after that previous little failure, I took a minor break to uh, have a mental meltdown over breaking another tool. Don't even remember what I was rambling about last time. I think I vaguely remember it was something about a book. I don't know. Who reads books anyways? Nerds, that's who. Also me, but that kind of proves the point I was just making. There we go. Hammers. You won't disappoint me. I've broken hammers. I shouldn't say that. Also a nice tip I learned from a book. Pliers and vice grips make surprisingly useful metal shaping tools. Speaking of books, one book I read seemed to suggest that any tool that works is the right tool for that job. However, he did mention uh, don't, uh, don't use live animals. Not sure why he thought to put that in the book, but it's it's there. So I've I've never once tried to use my cat to bend sheet metal. All right, test fit time. Oh, after all this struggle, this thing better fit. Or I'm gonna have a major cry. Eh, it kind of fits. It's a little too small. I wonder if I flip it around. Will that help? It does not. I suppose I'll just stick it in like that with like a gap somewhere. Whatever. I gotta punch these holes first though. Fire up the air compressor. It's alive! Okay, according to my pattern that I discarded in a fit of rage, goes 2.52, 1. 1.51. Yeah, we'll go with that. Starting with the big one, 2.5. Now, before I use these, I always pop a whole bunch of, whoops, pop a whole bunch of breaking my WD-40 bottle. WD-40 all up in there. I don't know if that'll help them last longer, but I'm sure the lubrication helps. Let's see, now, which way do I want the flare to go? I want the flare to go that way, which means it goes in the top. You disappoint me handle goes away and now 
this silver socket is going to prove its worth. Yeah, and if you're too worried, these, uh, this thing is completely gutless. It's totally wore out, I think. There we go. That was a lot harder than I, than I should have been. All oh, right, these never come out. Um, uh, cool. So much grease. Grease means no corrosion though, right? In theory, which one's this one? Doesn't it say two inch? Two inch goes yeah, yeah. So again, we want the flare to go down, same direction. Means like this, with ample lubrication. I'm also threading this in quite a ways by hand. So I, I never want to cross thread anything, especially with an impact. Impact cross threading is like the worst kind of cross thread. Yeah. Here we go. Next, the one and a half goes here, and then the one, one inch goes there. You know the drill by now. How cool is that? Got some beads rolled, flange. Some, some holes, and I only broke one tool so far. Right now I'm just gonna clean up as much of this as I can, wipe it all down, acetone the crap out of it, and then fire up the welder. One thing I've noticed with these punch and flare dies, these have burrs in them, so just be careful. Careful of that. Yeah, that's, that's about as good as that's gonna get. Well, that's about as boogery of a weld as you could ever imagine. Let's try for another one. All right, and the test. Okay, that's held on pretty good. What else was I gonna do? Oh, right. I have all of these things that I'm gonna make posts to hang the, the dies on. And I decided, whoops, dropped one. Since I stand on this side and I hit the trigger and feed it through, I'm gonna stick them here so they're within reach. So let's mount the first one. Get this wiring out of the way. I'm gonna use these plastic dies as stand-ins because these are ones I printed that, I'm, that are bad. I'm not actually gonna use them. Now using this thing, I can very easily put it in at like a 45 degree angle and it'll hold it nice, but I don't think I want it at a 45. I don't want it like 90 either. I want it just a hair up from 90. So what I'm gonna do is weld it in at 90 and then tippy tap it up with a hammer. Or in fact, I might just tack it on the bottom and then weld the crap out of it on the top. And when it cools, it'll pull it up just slightly. That's the idea anyway. I'm going to align it dead center with this weld seam on this pole here. Yep, that was a boogery weld. There we go, settings adjusted. Still had it set for doing the sheet metal to the, the square tubing, not this big honking thick stuff. That's better. There, did that pull it up? I don't know. Okay, here's hoping this doesn't melt immediately. Oop. Looks like I can get two dies to hang on there. Maybe not that well. Maybe just one. One or two. Yeah, because some of these are some of these are pretty big. So I think I think if I use this one at droop, touch the bottom of it with the magnet and stick that on, that will be a good distance, I think. Yeah. And on 
on and on it goes. Not a lot of jibber jabber in this part. I apologize for those of you who come for the rambling, but I'm so far behind schedule. Sometimes I just gotta shut up and do stuff. Cool, huh? Ignore the part about how uh, my poor fitment there makes this panel completely useless for stiffening. But it looks cool, right? Right? Isn't that what matters most? Not really. But check these out. So these stick out. If I look down, they're pretty straight. But I'm not so sure they, they lean up enough. So I'm just going to uh, find... Where did I put my hammer? Not that one. That was a weak hammer. There we go. Just gonna straighten it out a bit. Just a little bit of uh, tappy tap. Move it up just a hair. Whoops. Welding on that one is particularly bad. Most of them are welded in pretty solid though. See, uh, no, they're all pretty much lined up. Yeah, we'll just forget the ones that are busted and fix those later if and when they fall off. So I have these. These are the, the dies and a lot of these are paired. Like this is a large bead die, so if I put them together, you know, they don't fall off, I guess I can. Yeah, they still don't fall off. Cool, another, another pair of bead, bead dies. Mother, wait, these are the medium ones. Large, medium, small. Is that one of the weak ones? No, that's okay. I think these are tipping dies or something of that nature. Big step dies. Small step dies. Medium ones, the other side of this is currently up here. See, there it is. And this is kind of a standalone die. Huh. I have, I have already filled all of them. What am I gonna do? I'll, I'll have to cut more of those things out and maybe weld them on the other side. Yeah, cool. So now that all of that is finally over with, I'm going to go and finish crying about breaking my tool. And then, you know, who knows what I'll do after that. 